All right. So on a so on a nice rainy day, which is a perfect day for me to actually troubleshoot why this thing is running on direct current. So I just took out the stator. I have the rotor right there. I did replace the bra. I did replace the bearings. These bearings are from a believe it or not a ceiling fan. I was able to just simply pull them off. However, it is. It is exposed to one side, however, it is shielded on the other side. So, so if, if I'm able to get this thing running, um, I could probably just squirt some grease in there, clean, clean it up in there, squirt some grease in there, and that'll do for the bearings. See, the commutator is still... Can hear actually runs quiet now, which is a good thing. Alright, now, months ago, I took this thing apart to figure out why, however, a little note to the wise, take out the brushes before, because for me, I wasn't thinking, and I now have four useless brushes, well, looks like this one broke, and I need two brush holders, I, what I did was, I pulled the rotor off with the brushes still in. Now don't go ahead and have your laughing moment. All right, I think you calmed down enough. All right, so so now I need four four brushes and two brush holders. Hopefully, I can still use these for the test. If it does work, I'll I could probably order or someone can hook me up with this. I'll pay for whatever for the brushes and all but but here is the stator now what I noticed when I took this thing apart I don't know if it'll zoom in I don't know if it'll focus on it see all right, there we go focus on that see right about there I see exposed copper exposed copper however if I look on I forgot right there you can also see more exposed bare wire right there However, if I roll it over, right over here, you can see, I want to focus, there we go, you can see a lot more, come on, stop, alright, there we go, see, right about there, you can see the enamel coating on the wire has been scraped off, and I believe that has been touching on the sides of of the motor housing. So, what I did was after about a half hour, half hour of sanding, filing the sides of the over this touches, I I sanded, sanded, filed, and made sure that this could fit easily without a problem in there. And and I test fitted it, and it actually fits. So, so bef and before I put this in, I want to make sure that they do not touch, because I believe that it has been shorting out, shorting out the stator, thus making it run only on DC. So, you know, little simple fix, little electric tape. Well, I'll just do. I'll take a little bit. Need to cut it. Need to cut it using. Why not, why not a better tool than this? I'll just take a small piece and we'll just put it on the exposed wire like like that. There we go. Looking good. I'll just take one more just for just to be safe. Cut. Let it roll off. Pull the extra your flats. I'll move you over here. Alright, there we go. Make sure it's very tight. Alright, let's go to the other side. And let's repeat the process. Put electric tape. 
on the exposed wire. And hopefully this would fix the problem of, of shorting it out, because I believe that is the problem with this thing. So now the moment of truth. Put it putting it in here. Alright. Uh, uh, give me one second. Alright. Take this. You take your stator from this is what it looks like. And we'll feed it in. Now I have this filed a certain way which, in which I want to put it in the same way which I filed. Now let's feed the wires. Alright, make sure that it is not touching right below there. This is very important. See, right in there. So turn it over. You can probably see it, but it is not touching. And the. You now, this is very tedious, so please excuse me. Alright, alright, there we go. After fiddling with it for a couple minutes, I finally got it in. Finally got it in. Now for the test, I'm not going to put any screws or nothing. It's pretty solid in there. I'm just going to do it for a quick test to see if it works. I'm not going to put any screws or nothing. If it works, I'll probably I'll get new screws, bolts, everything. I'll re-tap all the holes so you can get through. So the screws fit in nice, nice and tight. If we flip this over to the underside, we can see our job that we did. The electric tape is right here, and the electric tape tape on this side is right here. It's a little peeled back, but it's still insulated from from the frame, which is what we need. All right. Now let's flip this guy back over. Put you back on the tripod. Now let's assemble it. Put the put the. Let's see. Uh, we could probably use these two brushes for the test because these look in pretty good condition. This one is salvageable for the test. If I'm only going to be running it on two brushes, plus I need a new one anyway, so. Probably toss that. So I'll be using these two brushes for the test. Now, let's uh, fast forward with the putting brushes and nonsense on. All right, there we go. All right, so I, I would put both brush holders in. I didn't. I left the brushes out, and that is going to be till afterwards. So now, here is the here is the rotor. Let's slide it on in very carefully. All right, here we go. Ow. All right, here we go. All right, uh, my, now this one goes on to sit there. There we go. It just clicked. And to uh, hold it in, let's grab. Choose a screwdriver. Does it spin? Yes, it does. So I put you there. Alright, 
so it spins nice and freely. So what I'm just going to do is simply take a screwdriver, jam it in there, and make sure it still spins. Do it for the other side. Take it, jam it in. Still spins. Awesome. You know? Let's put, now let's secure it on so it doesn't move when I move it over to the other side of the garage and actually test it. Now, take some vice grips, clamp it on, make sure it's not going nowhere. Repeat the process on the other side. Take some, take vice grips. Alright, awesome. And before we actually test it, let's put the brushes back in. Now these can be a little tricky. I'm going to be using this one. Looks like it got nicked in the past. Well. Brushes all. The brushes are in. Rotor spins freely. Bearings are fairly new. Got them from a ceiling fan. Brushes are destroyed. That is gone. So, what was that? All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna bring this over to the other side of the garage, and we'll see if this thing runs. All right. So here is the siren. Now I have it hooked up on a 120 volt alternating current. And I have it going just simply straight to one of these power supplies and I have a switch to be safe. Alright, so here we go. First test. I'm a little nervous. That's a positive sign. Alright, here we go. Well, I'd be damned. Thing actually runs. So, so if you ever have a problem with your siren running on alternating current after you uh, cleaned it up and all, just be sure you be careful about the stator because you don't want to make the mistake I did and uh and uh, damage the windings. But luckily, that's all fixed. I have the stator and all isolated and now my next mission is to get new brush holders and brushes so, so here we go I don't want to run up all the way because of the neighbors and all here we go one more time See if the brushes are making any sparks. Let's move this over a little bit. I want a clearer shot of the brushes. I have to move you back a little bit. Oh, we can see them right there. All right, here we go. Look at that. Look at that. No sparks. So, I, f I fixed the siren for the most part. I just gotta fix the brushes and all that nonsense. And if you know where I can get them, please let me know in the comments below. Alright, so thanks for watching and see you next time. Hope next time you see this thing, you'll see this thing running on 240 volts. Thanks for watching.